So I've made a series of videos on syntactic chrome. The first being on how to create the virtual domain and the second on how to apply axial compression on that. The essence of this video is to look at how do you apply a tensile deformation on the same kind of representative volume element. If you're interested in this, sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So as we get started, we're going to use this reference material for our study, which is a paper by D. Caroline on micromechanical modeling of synthetic foam. You'll find the link to this paper in the description section of this video. So uh, um, the representative element we're working with, which is the first step, is how to, cre to create it is basically what we see here. So the lengths are 80 by 80 by 80. The microsphere, which is the inclusion within this, is made of a diameter of 30 microns with a thickness of one micron. The next thing to consider is how on earth do you actually apply the tensile loading on this kind of material. And so this is a representative element we have here. Right at the back of it, it's got it's fixed in all three directions so that the system is fixed. And then the next thing we need to do is to identify a reference point where we're going to apply the load on. So it's a clear point like that. And then we're going to apply a tensile deformation on that point. And with that tensile deformation, we need to be able to link this to the phase of interest, which will be in this case, the X front phase. And the next thing we need to do is to make a kinematic connection between the front and that reference point so that whatever is happening at reference point is transferred to what's happening as the X front phase. And the reason, the way of doing this is use what is called the kinematic constraint. So the first thing under the kinematic constraint is that we need to look at the equation that is driving the response we want. So here, the X front has got a displacement. So U is a displacement variable of the X front in the X direction has to be equal to displacement of a reference point, which is this set in the x direction again. So what that basically means is that when we displace reference point one, this front face will likewise displace. And if we change it to a canonical format, so that means we make the right hand side of the equation to be zero. So we get into a format where we can actually translate this information into a canonical equation within Abacus. And Abacus is the star equation command to drive this. So the Abacus format of this will look like that. So we get plus u1 where one in this case represents the x-axis in material reference frame. The x front is the nodal set. Reference point one is the nodal set. Minus one and plus one are the coefficients of the key variables, the terms that make up the system. I'm going to show you how this can be translated into the simulation to make sure that we implement this constraint equation within our simulation. The material model that we're going to, material properties we're going to use are given in this, is again, is taken from this paper. The only thing that I've done here is instead of simulating failure, I'm replacing the failure strength as a yield property so that the material is going to be an elastoplastic material model. So let's go into Abacus so I can show you in detail of how to set up this model. So here we are in Abacus. So what we're going to look at here is this is the representative volume element of the problem that we're going we're dealing with. So if you're interested in how this is created, this is a video that tells you how to set up, create this from first principles until you get generate a model that looks like this. So we're going to pick it up from there. So the first thing we need to do is if we go into there, we need to open up the synthetic foam RVE, which is one of the parts that is created by following that video that I, I referred to. So we need to create the materials first. So I'm going to call the epoxy material and that epoxy material, according to the information that we've given, will consist of the 3.178.19 and then this is 0 0.35. And then we can incorporate the plasticity argument as well. So what would the plasticity be? So based on the plasticity here, the yield stress was 95 e to power six megapascal and zero. So we can see 75 e to power six and then just, just a slight post yield strain softening is what we need. And then the microspheres, so we have an elastic property of 70 e to power nine and 0 0.2. And then we're looking at the plasticity. So the fracture strength, we're going to model it with an elastic, so that will be 965 e to the power 6 and 0, 0.0. So we leave that like that. So that's the property. So let's get the strength. So the epoxy section. And so with the microsphere section, again, we select the microsphere. So the next thing is to then do the this. But before we do that, let's just remove selected. So if I click on this, remove selected. So I want to switch this from faces to cells. So I now select only that cells and click done. So that removes that, leaving me with this. Then I can now double click on this, select what we want, untick this, done. So that will now mean I want to make that my microspheres. So microspheres selected. I can go back here and invert 
So when I fat, that leaves me only with the matrix and then I can select the matrix, click done again, and then I can then go ahead and make that epoxy. So when I replace all, everything comes back and then I can switch to material module to show everything looks perfect. So to mesh this system, if I click here, so it's giving me about six, six, I'll work with that. And then I can then de determine, so a tetrahedron is fine. And then I can now mesh. Okay, so we're happy with that mesh. So let's create the step. Okay, if we go into the assembly module, the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to have to assign sets. So the first set we need to create is the X front. Okay, and that X front will have to be based on this. I'm going to switch this to faces and then I'll switch this to face angle so that when I select, I select everything on that face. So that's X front. And then the next thing is Y top. So again, I hover there, select everything on the top. And then the next one is Z front. I hover over there, selects everything. And then we can then turn the system around so that we have the back end also showing. So we can then do X back, which is this end. And Y base. So this is the Y direction, so the base will be here. And then Z, Z back, which will be the one here. So that's fine. And then we'll return back. So there's, we need to then introduce our reference point. So let's just probe. So I'm going to probe this point to give an, get an idea of what is happening. So basically this is the coordinate of that point. And then I need to introduce a reference point next to it. So if you click tools reference point, paste it there. So I want it to be a little bit further away. So that's nine. So that's there. We need to also include a reference point for that. So that would be a reference point set for this case because we're going to use it later on. So, so I want to go to individual, switch to all and select that. So that's fine. Okay. So we've got all the set indicated that it's supposed to be. So then we look at the boundary condition. So, so what do we first do? So X back as a roller support. So we'll go to the set X back highlight. So we're going to fix it only in the one direction. So we'll do the same thing for Y base as a roller support. So that's Y base and we fix it in the two direction. And then the next one is Z back as a roller support. So that's Z back and we fix it in the three directions. So we've got all the references fixed on the system. Let's apply a load. So tensile load is going to be changed to a loading step and we're going to apply that on the reference point and that load in the one direction for this particular case could be, so let's say 30 you know, or maybe 40, which is about 50%. So we apply 50% load on the system. So we've got it here. We need to kinematically link it to what's happening in the front here. So how do we do that? We go to the constraint, the kinematic constraint. So just call it the constraint equation. So that will be under equation here. So that's where we now need to apply the theory. So one will be the coefficient. And we start with the X front in the one direction, one direction again, with respect to the reference point set and minus one, according to which is the take of the coefficient. So we've got all that. So that means this point is linked with that and it's all connected perfectly. And we're happy with everything that we've got here. So we can track some history output. So our reference point So we've got all the history outputs detected as they're supposed to be. So that's the first case, which is the extension. So now all we need to do is to do the same for the other direction. So if I copy and then this can then be Y tension. And then we can copy again and then do Z tension. So that's Z tension. So if we just go into the extension, all we need to do are two things. So the tensile load this time around, we need to move in the Y direction because this is the Y direction. So we move it from here into this point. So it becomes Y. 
So that means you're moving in this way. And then you now need to translate this to that y top phase. And that's where we now need to constrain the equation. So we are now going to the y top in the two direction. That's all the changes you need to make. So basically, any action here get translated to that. And we're happy for that to go. So in terms of the z direction, again, the similar thing, we change the direction of our tensile load. So from the one axis to the third axis, okay? And then our constraint equation would have to move from z to the z front in the third axis. We are all set up and we can create the jobs. All right, so let's look at the result that we generate from this. So the first of them here would be this simulation that shows you the extensile deformation. And it does show some very interesting behavior. And on the system, so if we go to the end, so you can see what's happening. So the front end is being deformed and the back ends are held. And you've got, so if we put these two together, so it can show you exactly what is going on. And the key is information is, is sort of what we would expect in that direction. So we've got a real uneven deformation on the material. And that's what you get with the X tensile deformation. So what about Y tensile deformation? Again, the system is being pushed in the y direction it's been pulled up and the system is moving up again there's an elongation of these microspheres and then finally in the z tension again you get some interesting behavior as well with the system expanding and then the particles also expanding likewise so sort of the expected behavior you will get on this kind of material what would really be interesting in all this is to extract the stress strain data associated with them so let's go back to the extension and we're going to extract that so what we'll do is we click on this we're going to track the history output we already asked it to record the history output so what do we want in the x direction reaction force in the one and displacement in the one and we plot that and it gives us a nice graph of what's happening in the system in that direction so what we're going to do with this is we're going to so plug in to excel utilities so i'm going to then harvest from current plot this data put it into excel so that i can then track it so this is the result you get from excel so we'll copy that data and i've prepared this spreadsheet to help in manipulating this data so i'll paste the data here so and it gives us some strike information about what we so there's something that is missing here so we can get the strain and what is the strain the strain is the displacement in one direction divided by the length in that direction and that works fine however we don't have this parameter so because we are look, we are missing the surface area of the system clearly we have an sort of an uneven surface area an irregular surface area so what do we do in order to extract the surface area so what we're going to do is we're going to use that script but before we do that let's probe so let's go to the path module and what we want is the synthetic rve so this is what so we're going to probe that so let's probe that node and see what this node would tell us and then we click done so clearly we have the coordinates of that node for the front software so now this is a python script that we're going to use so i'll just go there and paste the value of that node that we've copied so the model name is synthetic form extension and where do we get that so right at the top here that's the model name this is the model name synthetic extension and the path name we're using is synthetic form rve so that's synthetic form rve so once you put in that and you put the face a point on the face of interest all we need to do control a to select or control c to copy and then you go back to to this code and then in the kernel command wisdom of abacus you can paste that data at the end it will give you some numbers here which we are going to again select and click ctrl c to copy and when we come back to this code we'll paste that there so once we paste it everything will work so now this is the surface area of, of the irregular surface and what how do we get the area the stress so reaction force divided by that surface area so that gives us the stress and that gives us the strain and with that we can also work out what the elastic limit will be within the elastic region which is the Young's modulus and we can also work out what the maximum stress will be which will be the number that is there so this is what we'll need to do and you can go ahead and do the same for the y tension and the z tension which i've already done and these are the properties that you get from that and when you put everything together get a nice behavior of the graph that shows you what is going on here for the effective stress strain profile of this synthetic foam undergoing a tensile deformation with the x tension being this the y tension being that and the z tension 
being that. So there's a bit of variation in terms of the properties that you're generating from that, which is very interesting. And the main reason for that is because it's nature of the different cross-sectional areas. So they say, you know, a cross-sectional area here is different from here in the y direction. There's only this region that is cut out. In the z direction, there's a lot of missing spaces. So the area will be quite much, much smaller. And so these are sort of the issues that we find here. And it gives us some very interesting. But again, this is why you need to really do some sort of RV you know, sizing effect to see whether this result is actually representative. So I went on to compare the effective properties of the Young's modulus and the yields or yields or strength of this material and you can see a bit of comparison in terms of what they are across those three directions which again is interesting because you know with a bit, a bit more study around this you could prove whether there is true variability in this and and that's sort of how you can undertake a, a tensile deformation for this sort of material if you're interested in learning how i set up the original virtual domain that we used in this then look at the video if you just want to see again how this material behave in compression then this is another video for you to look at so thank you for your interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye <laughs>